Hi, I'm Tim. And on behalf of the entire Apollo family, I'm super excited that you've chosen us for your RV experience. I'm about to share with you all the tips and tricks on operating your RV. So your two best friends on your travels will be your Apollo Connect app and the How To Guide. With the Apollo Connect app, you can find local points of interest, get prepared for your road trip with our safe drive and how-to videos, and with our friends at Camp Stay, find and book campgrounds and holiday parks. Your second best friend will be the How-To Guide. The How-To Guide contains all the relevant instructions on the features of your chosen RV. Let's do a quick tour around your adventure camper. Don't worry, we'll come back and look at each function in much more detail later. Starting back here on the driver's side, you've got the outside shower compartment here. Down here you've got two underbody storage units. This one will have the power lead in it. You'll use this to connect your camper to mains power. You've got a large storage unit here. Just push the two buttons in at the same time to open. A handy little latch here to keep the door open too. Inside you're going to find a light. Just remember to switch this off when you're not using it. This is where you'll connect the camper to the mains power at a campground. Next compartment here holds the house battery and all the control appliances. We recommend you don't use this storage at all, just in case you bump something loose. You've even got more storage up here, again with its own light. This is the inlet for the fresh water tank. Alright, passenger side now. You've got the fuel inlet here. Just use the ignition key to open the cap when you need to fill up. Make sure you only fill with diesel fuel. You've got a tap here for general use. You've got your LPG bottles stored in this compartment. The LPG will be used for the cooking stove only. This camper has a fantastic kitchen here. Complete with a large upright fridge freezer that runs on 12 volts. Lots of storage for food, all the crockery and utensils you'll need on the road. A slide out tray with a two burner gas cooker. You'll notice lights under the door too. There's a large awning here with an exterior light to get into the main door easier, you've got a pull out step. The main door here, complete with a fly screen which you can separate. At the back here, there's a rear vision camera, excellent for reversing into campsites and car parks. The camper comes with two spare tyres and two jerry cans you can fill with fuel for those extra long drives. The roof is a pop top roof, giving you heaps of room inside. The bed is fixed and ready for a great night's sleep straight away. All right, a quick tour of the driving cabin. This model has an automatic transmission. Indicators are on the right. Windscreen wipers are on the left. And the handbrake is right in the middle, on your left. You've got a USB input here to charge your phone, as well as connect to the vehicle's stereo, as well as a 12 volt outlet. There's a reversing camera at the back, and the monitor is attached to the rear vision mirror. Always use this when reversing. You can turn it off while driving normally to avoid distractions. Also note, to change a tyre, you've got a jack and tools located back here behind the seats. So that's a quick tour around and inside the camper. Let's now get into the tips and tricks on operating your adventure camper. All right, let's talk about four wheel driving. For the most part, you're just gonna use H2, which is high speed two wheel drive. If you're driving off-road, select H4, high range four wheel drive mode. You can switch between high range two and four wheel drive while you are driving at speeds below 100 kilometers per hour. To tackle steep, slippery tracks, you'll need the maximum power and traction of L4, low range four wheel drive mode. To switch from H4 to L4 mode, your vehicle needs to be stationary and the gear needs to be in neutral. Then push and turn the selector to L4. You'll see the 4L luminate on the dashboard when the camper has changed into low range four wheel drive mode. When returning to sealed roads, switch back to H2. Not doing so could cause some serious damage to the engine. To lift the pop top roof, start by releasing all four clasps. You will notice the awning fabric is fixed to the top of the roof. You will need to turn down the safety spring lock to the extend position, which will allow the awning to rise up with the pop top roof. Move inside and lift both roof handles at the same time, making sure the door remains open. Open a window to allow for air circulation and extra light.
When packing up, release the awning, grab the handles and pull straight down, making sure any extra fabric is pulled inside the vehicle. Don't forget to close all four clasps to secure the pop top roof before heading off. To use the awning, firstly make sure the pop top roof is up. Slide the arm lock up and swing out. And do the same for the other arm. Release the wheel lock on the inside arm and repeat for the other side. With the pop top roof up, the safety spring lock should already be in the extended position. Grab the pull strap and pull out until fully extended. Slide the arm to the end of the awning. Push the button down to lock the arm into place. Repeat for the second arm. Lift the leg by opening the handle lock on the leg and extend out. We suggest you lift each leg in stages to avoid twisting the awning too much. Raise the awning above head height to stop you hitting your head. Adjust the arms to make the fabric taut by tightening their wheel locks each side. Secure the pull strap away by loosely tying it to the leg. To pack the awning away, loosen the wheel lock on the first arm. Open the handle lock and slide back halfway, making sure not to twist the awning too much. Loosen the wheel lock on the second arm. Slide the second leg all the way back to the camper. Then slide the first leg the rest of the way. Press the button to release the arm and slide back down. Make sure the arm lock is swung out of the way to let the arm slide past. And do the same for the other arm. Grab the pull strap and don't let go as you flick the safety spring lock down to the retract position. Slowly guide the awning back to the camper. Close the arm lock by sliding it back into place. Tighten the wheel lock for travel and the awning is now secure. The main door to the cabin is great. It has a fly screen built into the door. Simply lower the lever to release from the door. When you close the door, turn the handle to the left to engage the secondary closing mechanism. This will pull the door airtight so no dust or water can get in. You'll need to do this in order to lock the door with the key. Same on the inside. When you close the door, turn the handle up to engage the secondary closing mechanism. You can then lock the door with the top lever. Please note, if you turn the handle left before closing the door, you won't be able to close the door shut. Please do not force the door if it's not closing properly as you may cause damage to the door frame. All right, cool little windows here. You can open them up for some fresh air. And we've also got a little fly screen here. Keep the little bugs out. When you're ready to sleep, it's got a block out blind. And we've got a block out blind over here too. Your Adventure Camper has a 12 volt house battery that runs the water pump, lights and fridge. All the 12 volt switches can be found here at the control panel. It also powers the 12 volt outlets and USB charging ports. You'll see the remaining charge of the house battery here. When you are driving, the engine will charge the house battery. There's also a solar panel on the roof that feeds the house battery. If the level is getting low, plugging the camper into mains power will fully recharge the battery. To connect the camper to the 240 mains power, You'll need the lead which will be found in this compartment. You're going to notice with the lead that it's got a really large earth pin. That means it's rated at 15 amps. You can't plug this into a normal power outlet. All campgrounds in Australia will be rated at 15 amps. Just make sure when you're connecting you've got a really nice solid connection with the large earth pin at the bottom. Make sure the circuit breaker is in the on position. Turn off all appliances prior to disconnecting from the power inlet. And always remember to unplug your RV when you're about to drive off. When it's time to cook, your adventure camper is packed with everything you're going to need and it's right here. 
push the two yellow tabs at the same time and pull the tray out. Next you'll need to grab a gas bottle out of the compartment here. Release the bottle by undoing the strap. Place the bottle on the ground and connect the hose firmly to the bottle. This will connect anti-clockwise. Unlatch the lid and connect the hose to the cooker, this time turning clockwise. Continue to unpack the cooker. When you're ready to cook, turn the gas on at the bottle. Turn the dial at the stove on and light with a match or a lighter. Once you've finished cooking, turn the gas off at the bottle and allow plenty of time for the stove to cool before packing up. Disconnect the hose. Place the bottle back into its compartment and use the rubber strap to hold the bottle in place. Push the two tabs to release the tray and slide back in. Finally, when you shut the main kitchen door, make sure you push each latch in so you hear it click. Some campers will have a single latch on the kitchen door. This will need to be turned 180 degrees to be fully closed. The fridge in your adventure camper is going to work off the 12 volt system and the 240 mains power when connected at a campground. Simply turn on the 12 volt switch and leave it on during your holiday. When driving, the fridge will work off the adventure camper's engine. To open, pull the small black lever down. Open the freezer door and you'll find the thermostat dial. This will need to be on to operate the fridge. The water pump supplies water from the fresh water tank to the outside shower and the tap near the kitchen. Turn on the 12 volt pump switch at the control panel to get the water flowing. Please do not drink the water straight out of the tap. We suggest boiling the water before drinking. To use the shower, use the silver key that has the same number on as the outside shower compartment. Pull the shower head out and place onto the hook on the camper. When you're ready to shower, turn the water pump switch on and turn the cold water tap on. A quick tip, the shower head has a valve you can close to stop the water. When you have run out of water, you will need to refill the fresh water tank here with the provided hose. There is no water level indicator. Simply fill the water until the water comes back out. All of the lights in your adventure camper are going to work off the 12 volt system. They are separated into two areas, inside and outside. The inside lights will be labelled cabin lights, and these will have a switch on each individual light. To use the outside lights, simply switch on at the main control panel. Please note the lights in the storage compartment will need to be individually turned on and off. The storage door inside the adventure camper can be used as a handy table. The table leg will be stored in the compartment. Simply insert into the base of the table and enjoy. All right guys, that's it from me. Don't forget, your two best friends are gonna be your how-to guide and the Apollo Connect app. We wish you all the best on your trip and we'll see you next time.